I'm Adrian Arce, and for this part of the presentation, I bring you the demo of the impact of a lightning strike of, on an airplane. In this simulation, we aim to observe the currents induced in the airplane wiring after the impact. We will begin by opening the blank screen card uh, document. Uh, let me a second. Okay. So here is our blank document, and we will import the airplane model. To import the model, just go to File, uh, Import, and select all the models that you want to import. In this case, I will import the fuselage, the cable, the board, and the interior of the airplane. We need a few minutes, seconds to to let the FreeCAD work. So here is the model that we are will we are we will we we will be working on. Uh, the most important part of all the model is the cables inside of the airplane that we will be that will be substituted by some wires. We will be focusing on the airplane nose, the fuel system that has a cable in the bottom part of the airplane, and the wires that connect the flight computer to all the systems. So, uh, I'm gonna jump on another file where all the cables are being substituted by some wires. This part will be must be done using the polyline mode on FreeCAD, or if you have any model that has already the wires defined, will be much easier. So, let's jump onto the model that is that has all the wires defined. This will take a few seconds. So, here is the same plane that we have shown before, but all the cables have been replaced by wires. All these wires are defined in the same way as uh, Alejandro did on his demo before. So. Uh, now we need to define the junction between the all the three wires because all the the wires that we define in FreeCAD are uh, defined separately. So uh, in this case we have the three wires plus uh, two other wires that are the start wire at, and the end wire. These two are uh, used for defining the the trajectory of the lightning strike that will get in and out of the airplane. So, uh, to define a junction, we must go to Ellen Workbench, Electromagnetic Workbench, or Ellen Workbench, and jump to the junctions option. Here, uh, we can create a new junction, and inside of it, we can select Add New Subsection. Subsection. In this part, we will drag and drop all the wires that are connected between each other. In this case, wire, uh, wire, wire 001 and wire 002. If we click on apply, I will get a new junction already defined. The second part we need to define are the inner parts of the cables. In this case, the cables that uh, came from the flight computer are defined at, as two uh, inner wires, one from the nose sensors and the other one from the uh, the fuel systems. So, uh, to define the inner parts of a cable, we must go to the cable section. If we jump here, if you remember from the the other demo, to define uh, the cable uh, properties of a wire, we must to go to the cable section. We click on cable and it will create another uh, object like this. Uh, if we jump into the properties of cable, we can see uh, another uh, section that is defined as cross section file. This part is used to define the inner parts of a, of a cable. Uh, it's the way that we can connect the 3D part of the simulation with the pure TLM. MTLN part of the simulation. 
here we can go to the create cross section template and uh, choose one of the uh, predefined uh, cross section files or we can create a custom one whatever is needed in any case in this case I will choose the two wires we can click on create and update inner structure when we do when we have done this uh, part we will see that the cross section uh, button will light on in this case if we click on cable and then on the cross section option uh, the document that will be open is the cross section file of the cable that we have highlighted here in this case uh, the cable has two inner wires one quite bigger than the other uh, but we can uh, personalize this kind of cross section if we click on any part of the conductor that are open in the left side uh, remember that the conductor number zero is associated with the shear part of the cable and conductor one and conductor two are the inner parts here are the properties of uh, each each one of the inner parts of the cable so here we could for, for example uh, make a, a little big a little to the left the conductor number one for example we can place here check. when we have finished finished with the uh, changes on the cross section file we must uh, save the, art, the document and then uh, go to the right side of the toolbar and click on write pure tlm json file after this click on a uh, run pure tlm for the current cross section scenario and it will mesh all the cross section file that we have defined it will take a few seconds okay we will need to do this with every single cable that uh, has uh, the simulation in this case I will do it just for one and later in the, in the demo I will show you another example with all the cables that are already defined we can now close the document associated with the cross section file we can just go to the cross here check the, change, the changes and go again to the airplane demo okay now that we have defined the junctions and the inner parts of the cable we need to define uh, all the bulks uh, and, and the probes that we need to measure all the current that uh, are interesting for us in this case this demo have, has already uh, two point probes and two bulk probes but i am going to show you how to define another bulk probe instead of doing all the all the uh, other ones that are already defined we can go for example to the flighting bar wire mo uh, flighting monitor wire that is right here and i am interested on in measure the current that will be uh, infrared to due to the lifestyle we can in this case define a bulk probe the bulk probe needs needs a, a geometry to be defined in this case will be a plane to define a plane we must go to the draft section of FreeCAD and click on generate primitives that will appear right here on the left side of the toolbar uh, okay uh, let me This is no sorry it's in the part side in the part of world range here create primitives we click on create primitives and in this case i will define a plane uh, one tip in case uh, you are using frica to define all the geometry you can go to the 3d view option click on the 3d view and then on the way that you want to use the probe this will generate automatically the coordinates associated with the y as you can see when I click it on the wire uh, all the coordinates are defined now I can create the plane I will press the button create it will show me again all the plane and here is uh, the, uh, the default uh, plane 
plane geometry. I can adjust it with the property section. We can jump to plane, that is the geometry that we have already defined, and go to the, uh, its properties. For example, in this case, it's too small for us. I will define it uh, with a with a length of 30 millimeters and uh, 30 millimeters on the other dimension, and I will rotate it 90 degrees. In, the, in this case, I need it to be in the axis of X and not on the Y axis and a 90 degree angle. Okay. If I see that the the bulk proof is not uh, being passing through the wire, I can just adjust the the position coordinates. In this case, I can jump to the position. Will be the x value with the mouse wheel. I can just adjust. I can adjust it and go to the correct position. Okay. I have defined the book proof that I needed, and at least the geometry, now I need the proof itself. So, go back to the LM Workbench uh, part, and add a book proof container that is located here on the toolbar where are the dots and squares are forming a group. We create on book proof, which is book proof has to jump onto the prof section and now the bull prof needs to to get a reference for the geometry that we have already created in this case we need a line reference for now uh, it's uh, the lines and the bulk reference are in the same place when we click on the line reference we, we will create this object that must be on uh, the bulk prof uh, Menu. When we have the line reference on on its place, I can jump inside or click inside and select the geometry that we have defined as the uh, flighting computer bulk probe. This will be uh, in the plane that we have already defined. I will click on it and let it check. We can close it now and. Uh, the proof is already defined. For the last part, we need to define the sources. In this case, uh, it's a light strike that is uh, hitting on the nose part of the airplane. We need another source to be defined. I have already defined the polyline, so we don't spend too much time on it, but I have to define uh, yet the sources. In this case, it's another source. I can go to the source section that is right here and go to the one that uh, uh, set at source online container. We drag and drop the new source onto, onto the sources uh, place. And here we need again uh, another line reference. We can just click on the line reference uh, button, drag and drop it to the source online and select the nodal source uh, line, the polyline. Uh, remember that I have defined this polyline as the stat. Here is the stat. If you need to check that is the correct polyline, you can just double click when it's selected and it will highlight all the cable. Okay, uh, the last part of the of the demo is uh, the definition of the grid and the solver. In this case, the, the grid is defined as a, as a re rectangular grid with a cells of 80 millimeters. In case uh, parts of the geometry of the airplane or any other complex materials is, uh, needs any cells that are smaller than this kind of size, you can uh, go to the grid section, that is right here, I have already defined the grid, and go to the rectilinear mode. If you click here, you will uh, uh, be able to adjust manually all the grid cells that it needed. For example, if we needed to 
uh, to define uh, smaller cells closer to the wire, we can just go here and redefine the cells that are associated with these places. I'm going to close the grid section now. And for the last part, we need to define the solver. In this case, uh, I defined the, the properties of the solver in a way that uh, the shockwave will be able to go to the, tail, to the tail of the airplane and go back. In this case, the time needed is uh, 6 to the power of minus uh, 6 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 7, and it will be enough. So, in this, in this situation, we can go to the uh, to highlight the simulation place, go to LMC and mesh object with Semba. This will generate all the meshes, mesh objects that is needed uh, for the simulation. I'm going to try to run it now. Uh, it's likely that uh, we'll have some issues with the uh, definition of the mesh because the bulk probe has been uh, defined uh, in a fast way. So uh, it's possible that uh, some issue with the placement may occur. This will take a sec some seconds. Well, in this case, the mesh have done have not been able to to be done. But I'm gonna jump to the simulation part uh, that has already been defined and simulated, and I will show you how it may look like. I'm gonna close this one. and go to the final case. So here I'm going to show you that the model is exactly the same and we have uh, defined the same bulk proof here on the, on the flying computer system. So here is the bulk proof. I you can see it as the little square that is on the wire and I'm gonna uh, uh, get all the visibility of the model out and I will show you how the mesh will look like this is the mesh that will be defined here is the start of the light stage here is the end part and if I uh, take apart the fuselage mesh that is right here. You can see how the wires are defined, the bulk proof that is right here, and the, fly and the flying computer that is defined too. When we run to the, uh, the simulation button, we can just simply go to the Ellen Warren Challenge, go to simulation, highlight the simulation icon, and then go to the plot simulation result. Here uh, will show will show us all the results that are uh, recollected from all the probes that we have on the demo. Here is the the rear part of the probe. This is associated with the fuel systems. That uh, you can see that is very noisy. Uh, we will have too much interference here. Here is the nose part of the, simul the airplane. Here we can see that there is some kind of resonance occurring along the wire. 
here is the main the flying computer uh, we see that is the same the same kind of pattern as the the fuel system and here is the proof uh, the point pro that is located in the inner part of the airplane so with with all this we can finish the simulate uh, the demo simulation i hope all of the of the parts have been understood and are all clear uh, thank you all.